All right. So next on the agenda is the discrete um, of the discrete motion sensors, the capacitive uh, proximity sensor. And so what you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner is this uh, 6376BO, I believe, uh, lab volt um, com um, component that we have from our trainers. Uh, one thing that you oftentimes notice with the capacitive sensors is that uh, the capacitive sensor has a much uh, wider face, and you need more face to detect it with the, the um, um, inductive sensor could be relatively small, but you know it's it's got the same distance. Uh, the bigger or wider that capa uh, capacitor sensor actually increases the um, ability to sense at farther distances. Okay, we'll see that here in a moment. But as far as capa um, this uh, capacitor is a 6376BO, um, it's an uh, based on an Allen Bradley 875 uh, CP N20NP. Uh, 30.A2. So um, uh, we're going to operate at a 24 volts DC here in the um, lab volt environment uh, at the control circuit, but the um, Allen Bradley sensor can actually deal up to 10 to 48 volts. A lot of the other ones were 30 volt uh, maximums. Um, it has a 300 milliamp uh, load that it can take uh, uh, uses a PNP normally open but again we're going to use a relay trigger it's again a sourcing trigger uh, and it will be able to handle two amps at 30 volts DC now as I said it's a little wider um, the other ones were like 18 millimeters as you see here this one's 30 millimeters obviously there are other sizes that are smaller but uh, the you know depending on how much uh, material you need to go through uh, at the distance you need to reach at um, it is uh, 65 millimeters deep, very similar to the inductive sensor, so that you can adjust it and uh, loosen that nut up. And it's actually, um, I can't tell you, I would some type of plastic or Teflon or whatever, um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the uh, response is dependent on that size, as well as the detector that, uh, the material that it's going to sense. Um, as far as the sensor, it has a, um, a green and a red LED. The green says it's powered and the red uh, shows that it is energized. Um, the uh, sensor has an adjustment on the top so you can actually adjust it between 5 and 20 millimeters. Um, so you don't actually have to move the sensor, you could potentially just adjust it um, on the outside. And that may be helpful um, if you want the sensor to be the same place and you might be actually changing the material that you're detecting. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, I believe the inductive sensor that we showed you a moment ago had 10% um, uh, hysteresis. This has a 20% hysteresis. So uh, if you're detecting at 5 millimeters, uh, or let's say they say 10 millimeters, that makes it easier, um, that it will stay on up to 12. So you get that extra 12. So it's not going to fluctuate in that close in range. Where the inductive was at 100 hertz, this uh, 1000 hertz, this is actually at 100 hertz. Um, it's general purpose, and again, it has that barrel mount to allow uh, some different uh, distancing. Now, um, what you'll see on this sensor, it's actually, I mean, it, it's black, so you really can't tell, but the outer edge of that is uh, non-metal. So if it was metal, then it would be a shielded probe, uh, and I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, so the idea is if you touch the, or came up on the side, you, you wouldn't trip it here. What, what you'll see here is that we have an unshielded one, and it, it kind of notes it has a compensating probe, a little less it says the probe on the edge than it does on the on the center there. Um, as far as capacitors, uh, so just talk a little bit about that. Um, it uses the capacitor principle where you have two plates. You know, have a plate with positive and plate has negative, and then you have some type of dielectric constant or material in between it. And depending on how much material is in, in between, it depends on, you know, what type of response you get it. So um, what we're going to see is that we're going to run an AC, cir AC um, um, signal through that, an oscillating signal, um, when it actually gets triggered. So the kind of the difference was in the inductive sensor, as that metal perturbed uh, the, uh, the space there, what happened is it caused that um, oscillation to shut down. So what we're going to see with the capacitive response is, depending on what type of material uh, occurs, uh, the distance here, so we're showing this is actually triggering here, 
that could actually it's actually kind of dependent on what type of material it is but the idea is that you know obviously get closer obviously that signal goes on but the idea here is the oscillations are actually going to occur um, so we're running that um, uh, oscillating current and then because of the capacitive constant it's going to actually trigger that so what's kind of interesting about this is that now that we have a signal going on that um, some of you know like a, a it doesn't have to be a full bridge rectifier it just could be a half bridge but the idea here is now all we have to do is put a diode on that and we would have a positive signal so a little bit different here the inductive sensor uh, triggers when there is no response and here we're actually going to take that oscillating uh, response and use that as part of our trigger so we have a, a variable voltage right and then it hits that constant at top there so um, I just kind of shown this again that, that you have in an inductive you have a coil in the end here we've got some type of capacitive probe and then there's an os, uh, os, um, oscillating circuit there and then it's going to run through that rectifying filter and that's how you're going to get the positive current so eventually what we're doing rectifying the AC to a, a DC uh, half wave or maybe full wave it's probably half wave but uh, I'm not exactly sure it wasn't specific in the documentation so um, as far as application as you show on the right hand side there uh, you might have a blade that's coming up or and so you may have an inductive sensor that tells you that the blade is in position um, you may also have a capacitive sensor to tell you it's wood so the point here is the inductive sensors are good at detecting metals it's not so good at detecting other materials with the capacitive sensor can detect metals it can also detect woods and, and, and a lot of other types of materials. So we'll get to that in just a moment as far as the distance um, what it just mentions here is depending on how it's mounted now we're dealing with the 30 millimeter model and it says that if you're going to mount it in metal you got to be kind of concerned because that metal um, is going to change the capacitive uh, response uh, you might have to actually do some adjustments on the remember it, it was adjustable uh, but the idea there it says that um, uh, your distance there is affected by the type of material so uh, it says three times the diameter I don't know why they say D it D's uh, the diameter but um, oh I said actually that's the kind of the spacing on that but um, it can affect that, that sensing a little bit so as far as the material um, I'm just going to point out really two important ones the, the, like the one important one here is water water has a dielectric constant of um, 80 um, I yeah and paper has a die um, uh, of like one uh, about two let's say so the thing about that is that um, suppose you had a milk carton right milk carton a paper milk carton the idea here is that um, it could actually sense how much milk was in there because the paper is doesn't have the same dielectric constant as the water in fact we oftentimes use this a lot in detecting the height of water there's other types of sensors can do it too but uh, as far as a capacitive sensor you know the outside of the um, container uh, could be maybe polyethylene or uh, PVC down here those are about two and three just like uh, you know not quite like paper but it is less um, glass uh, did I cut that off no glass as you can see is a little higher it's like four or five so that's where you're gonna have to kind of adjust your sensor you don't want the glass to trigger it but uh, works really good um, because there's this uh, difference in uh, material so you know if your glass you might have to I have to think about that um, that you'd have to be a little bit further plastic you could be a little plastic you could be a little further I, I'm I can't keep this straight there um, I think glass you'd have to be a little further back than plastic but um, uh, so the materials are different because we have containers you know as you can see here I mean this is really an odd thing but um, I don't think I had the gas on there but um, so you can see here that ammonia has like uh, 20 percent uh, of a dielectric constant of 20 if you had water at 80 uh, you could potentially use a capacitive sensor to detect potentially detect whether you had ammonia um, again, uh, ammonia or, or water in there so the idea is that, and then there's um, chloride liquid uh, so they have different constants so that you could go through and, and maybe detect it you'd have to be very um, uh, precise with your capacitor and the location of it but uh, oftentimes as I said you could use it to detect how much water 
So here it just shows two sensors. Now, um, these sensors can be different. There are the, the metal ones, and the metal ones could potentially screw into it, but then you'd also have to have seals on it, set like that. But oftentimes, the capacitor sensor, depending on what type, so if it's a if it's a metal frame, yeah, you would go through and use the metal, the shielded ones, potentially. But um, with a plastic, when you put the plastic, uh, for the plastic, uh, you know, shielded one, uh, unshielded ones in there and it could detect the water at if it was getting too high as well as if it went too low um, in food processing again capacitive sensors uh, can detect other things than metal so uh, it could detect as you can see there it shows a um, what a package of nine muffins and it could detect if one of the muffins was missing there um, or something like that so yeah that, that allows you to detect other types of material um, as far as water, uh, there's also like uh, sight uh, tubes. And so on the left hand side, it just kind of shows how a sight tube could have a capacitive sensor attached to it. And then on the right hand side, it, that shows that those sensors, the upper and lower sensor would be sent to top, top of control device. And you know, what we've talked about with uh, process control, right? You've got your, your error signal coming up and then you're, if you've got an error, then it causes the pump to kick on or um, if it's uh, too high, then it's going to ca cause the drain to pop open. So, you know, the typical closed system, uh, getting your error signal from your upper or lower sensors. Now, uh, what I, I should say, I was going to come back to it, but uh, all those materials, I mean, dielectric guns, what does that mean to me? Well, what it means to you is a uh, reduction in sensing distance. So what they show is water somewhere in here is like a, a dielectric constant bottom here, right uh, here has one. So if you're sensing water at 20 um, millimeters and you wanted to go through and try to detect uh, glass, uh, did I say glass? Well, we'll use glass. So uh, glass uh, would be reduced so that you could detect water at 20 millimeters. Glass would be detected at, what's it show here, at uh, uh, like late, well, they say 55. I, I thought it was like 20%. So it's a 20% less. So um, it would be detecting glass at 18. So somewhere there, uh, I, you could go at 19 or 20 and be able to detect water and, and would be able to ignore the glass. Um, as far as plastic, well, do they show something similar to, we'll say polyethylene. It's a 0 0.10. That's how, so you'd have to be pretty close up on that polyethylene to be able to detect it um, uh of sorts and and I'm going to show you an example of that here in uh, just a moment okay so um, let's go through and switch over to the camera and see the equipment in action all right so I've got it wired the same way um, I've got um, the positive signal coming over here on the normally closed so it says it's not triggering here I've got a green light on top here if I need to turn my camera just a little bit I've got the lights turned down low um, and it's right on the back side. I'll move it in a bit. Okay, the thing is I, I took a long time to get this adjustment and I just wanted to show you something. Um, what you're gonna see is the, the white, the plain white. And I have to say one thing about this uh, block. You're gonna see that these are raised surfaces and they're opposite of these three other surfaces. So it always tends to be the same height, right? Whether I have the non-surface now, because now it's flat and this is going to lift it up so it's the same distance oops now it's triggering it yeah, oh, darn it i bumped it might be my hand triggering it okay it's now triggering that's what i want to show you so now if i go through and put metal across this um, the metal is actually uh, causing it to trip in that distance oh now that now it's not doing it what I had it doing just a moment ago is with this plastic, I move the plastic through. The plastic doesn't sense, right, um, as well as the metal. The metal actually senses, well, now I can't get it to do it. Oh, that's interesting. That stainless steel, it appears the stainless steel is actually triggering. Actually, I got this even better than I thought, and that's the, the mild steel. But really what you do is you'd actually make it a little bit closer, right? So I'll put it down where it would normally sense. So now it's sensing everything. Okay, and that's what I was just trying to get to is that it uh, inductively or capacitively should sense it. You might get tricky and like I was showing you, I, I have this plastic here, uh, that retro reflector cell, and um, I had it just the right distance that the plastic, the, the steel, stainless steel, and I had the mild steel detecting and the plastic wasn't. 
So let's take a look at one more example of this, um, that, or how it really comes into play. Um, I've got a, see if I can keep this in the camera here. I've got a uh, container of water, right? And I've got plastic in there. I come up to it. It's not thick enough. So there's plastic that's not even thick enough to trip it. Okay. What I was just trying to get to is if I go through and I'm going to move, come on, be a little higher. I'm going to move the bottle up. And so I'm going to show you how it could be used to trigger out when the water level got to a certain level. Okay. So you'll see capacitive sensors uh, used to do that. The idea is that you don't have to have anything in the fluid, right? The, nothing has to be in here, especially if it's a food product. You don't want the, I mean, I guess you could have the sensor in there, but you have to clean it up and all that. Um, sometimes water will have other types of sensors in there. Um, I think we, you'll see one in the process trainer here. Um, if you take that class there, what they actually have is, um, oh, geez, they have a tube. Um, and I don't exactly remember. Oh, yeah. So what happens on that is that there's, uh, I believe, if I remember right, it actually has a, a cylinder tube and then it has a um, rod that goes down the, on the center, right? And so when the water comes up, what happens is it closes the circuit and uh, higher the water, the lower the resistance because it has less metal to climb. And so that's another type of, of simple sensor. But, you know, if you get gunk in there, right, it doesn't dry out, doesn't work out so well. So that's where your capacitive sensors, because they're not in the material um, um, and they're not going to cause that to, to occur. And I guess if you really thought about that, that other sensor could calcify in there. It could, could uh, change the way it behaves. All right. So that's the uh, capacitive sensor. Um, again, it's oftentimes used for uh, detecting um, fluids, but uh, because it doesn't need, uh, it doesn't uh, detect metals, it can detect any type of material, it can be tuned to uh, detect whatever uh, presence uh, you're looking for. All right. So with that, then, that's, uh, I believe that's the last of the uh, uh, components that I intend to show here. So um, that's the last of the um, the discrete motion sensors. There are also limit sensors, read switches, and so on, and I believe that may have been, or may you may see that in another video. All right, that's it.